This is a protractor. You may have used it in your math class to measure angles. You may have noticed that I have also been referring to these lines in terms of degrees, right? So why do we refer to these as degrees? Time to find out. Our Earth is a sphere, right? When you move on spherical objects like this, it is more convenient to measure the distance in terms of degrees. How? Let's cut this globe into half along the equator and call the center as O. Now, I want to move from the equator towards the North Pole. I move from A to B. How do I measure how much I have moved? If I draw a line from B to O and measure the angle BOA, this angle measures 10 degrees. This is to say that I have moved 10 degrees north. If I keep moving up along the Earth, the angle will keep increasing till I reach the North Pole where this angle becomes 90 degrees. The same thing happens in the Southern Hemisphere as well. Longitudes are also similar in this sense. Suppose this line is the prime meridian. So, if I move towards the east of this line from C to D, how do I measure this distance? Draw a line from D to O and measure the angle DOC. It is 10 degrees in the east. If I move further, the angle will increase till 180 degrees. This can be done for the Western Hemisphere as well. If I tell you to find the coordinates 30 degree north and 60 degree east, what will that look like? Now, this will be 30 degrees in the north. The entire circle is in fact 30 degrees north. So where on this circle is our point? Simply 60 degrees east of Prime Meridian. This is how we locate points with the help of their coordinates. There are a few significant latitudes. The equator divides the Earth into two halves, each half called a hemisphere. We have two other parallels of latitudes. The Tropic of Cancer in the Northern Hemisphere at 23.5 degrees North Latitude and the Tropic of Capricorn at 23.5 degrees South Latitude. Additionally, there is the Arctic Circle at 66.5 degrees North Latitude and the Antarctic Circle at 66.5 degrees South Latitude. With the help of these latitudes, we can demarcate the heat zones of the Earth. Due to the spherical shape of the Earth, different parts receive different amounts of sunlight. Generally, the amount of sunlight received decreases as we move from the equator towards the poles. Based on the difference in the amount of heat received, the temperature decreases as one moves away from the equator. Depending upon the difference in temperature observed, the Earth is divided into different types of heat zones. We have the torrid zone, the temperate zone, as well as the frigid zones. The torrid zone is the largest thermal zone covering around 50% of the Earth's surface. It is located between the Tropic of Cancer in the north and Tropic of Capricorn in the south. This region is hot as it experiences vertical sun rays almost throughout the year. Then, the zone lying between Tropic of Cancer and Arctic Circle in the Northern Hemisphere and between the Tropic of Capricorn and Antarctic Circle in the Southern Hemisphere has moderate temperatures and hence, these are called as temperate zones. The sun's rays never fall vertically in this region of temperate zone. Furthermore, 
The regions lying between the Arctic Circle and North Pole in the Northern Hemisphere and between the Antarctic Circle and South Pole in the Southern Hemisphere observe very low temperatures throughout the year and thus they are called as frigid zones. These are the coldest regions of the world as the sun's rays fall slanting in this zone. The surface remains permanently frozen under thick snow and hence the name frigid zone.